ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting on June 17th, 2024. I'd like to call this meeting to order. My name is Rachel Zenberry. I am the chair of the, of the board. If I could please um, request that the other members of the board please introduce themselves. Steve Revelock, good evening. Eugene Benson. Shana Corman Houston. Good love. We also have uh, Claire Ricker, the director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So uh, this evening, let's start with our first agenda item, which is a review of the uh, meeting minutes from June 10th, 2024. And I will see if any of the board members have any additions or corrections, starting with Ken. Yeah, I have one uh, correction on page. last page it says uh, I would like to put out a request for a proposal for a joint RFP to the town for a mixed use development project above uh, you say you said above the current building I uh, can change that to the current property uh, the building is a little small shoebox I, I meant more than just a, that that's all Great, thank you, Ken. Shana? I have none. Jean? I have no changes. Steve? Nothing here. And I have nothing either. Is there a motion to approve the uh, min meeting minutes as amended? So moved. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve? Yes. Jean? Yes. Shana? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. The meeting minutes have been approved. All right, uh, let's move to agenda item number two, which is a public hearing for docket number 3799, 5 to 7 Belknap Street. And I will turn it over to Director Ricker. Thank you. Um, this is the project that we heard, or that we at least had proposed to be open uh, during town meeting. Um, and we decided as a group, it was when we had just three members present, that we couldn't go to open. Um, because of the lack of the uh, supermajority um, to, to vote to do that. So it's up again on the agenda um, to be in compliance with our 60 days um, of application to hearing. We, we are required to open the hearing. We can continue it um, to a later date. I know that we are waiting on a final um, decision from the Attorney General's office regarding our MBTA community zoning. I also know that um, we are, that, that, that this is pending um, completion of a site plan review application, which has been requested by Mr. Benson. Um, but in order to stay within the legal timeline um, of this hearing, we are required to at least open it and can make a vote to continue it as well. Thank you. Um, I believe that we discussed having them withdraw this application and resubmit in the proper format, which is the site plan review so, so that's the that is the board's preference is to withdraw rather well than let's let again that was the preference of the three of us that evening so okay. let's just we'll have a discussion and um, if that's the case we will hold on opening it okay. and ask them to withdraw so um steve i believe you were there that yes, evening with us so why don't we start with you and then we'll kind of run yeah, down the road here i would like them to resubmit um you know with using the proper application i mean Part of me is thinking that, you know, what if the attorney general is is late? Um, I don't want to. I don't want to see us put ourselves in the position where uh, the AG's office, uh, their timeline causes us to have to issue a constructive approval. So I would pref I would actually prefer that the applicant resubmit after the AG approves, so that we have a we have a you know a de a well determined timeline going forward. Thank you, Steve. Jean? Sorry, Claire, did you have a question? No, Steve? I didn't. I said, I was just saying thank you. Okay, <laughs> great. Thank you. Jean? I have a question for Claire. If we don't open this tonight, are we going to run up against the 60 days before our next meeting? I think, I, I don't know. Um, I think what we, if, if the vote of the board is to withdraw, then that is, I think that's an action 
that we can then convey to the applicant? Okay, well, I guess, you know, I, I agree with um, what Rachel said that I thought our consensus last time was to request that they withdraw. I mean, number one, the regulations or the bylaw changes have not been approved. Correct. And number two, it's the wrong application. They asked for special permit EDR review for something that requires a site plan review. So maybe we should just dismiss this application tonight okay. um, so that we don't run afoul of the 60 days if we don't know. So it has the same effect of withdrawing and then they can file the right application after we get approval from the AG's office. So that's the alternative. Gene, to answer your question, it does say that it was filed on April 22nd, so I would assume that we would. Um, we are not meeting again until July 8th. So, so uh, again, I know we had made that recommended action, but if we decide to vote on um, officially dismissing this application with the request that they uh, submit after the AG's approval with the correct site plan review application, that certainly is an action we could consider this evening. Shana? Um, what, so, so, if you could just give me a little technical guidance here, uh, what, what would, under what grounds does one dismiss? What exactly does that technically mean? It is, uh, notice that we will not be hearing this case in the current application format. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is not, it is not a rejection, it's simply, it's simply we will not hear this. Correct, we are not voting to, to disapprove mm -hmm. this yep. application. Yep. We are noting that the incorrect application was submitted and that they need to uh, resubmit in the proper time frame, which is following the AG's yep. decision with the proper um, with the proper application. And then I think in the future, we would like to ensure that anyone who applies with the incorrect application is that that is notified before it comes in front of the board so we don't go Correct. through this process again. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks great. for the clarification. Thank you. Ken? Um. I just feel well. I feel for the uh, for the owner. Uh, he did the right thing and tried to get approval for what he wanted to do. Uh, it wasn't done right. Um, how long is it before the AG will make the decision? Because right now we're saying that we're not going to look at it until the AG has approved this. Correct. So what if the AG doesn't look at this till another six months? We were told June. We were told so, June 22nd. Correct. By town council. Okay. Can I just add a stipulation saying that we won't look at it? I agree. I agree with all the rest of the board that we should have to resubmit. But let's put it in a. I don't want to put in saying until until the AG has decided because in case it takes longer. I, I just want to be fair to the, the owner. I personally wouldn't agree to that because I, I don't think that we should um, start hearing the application before the AG's approval, but I'll see what the other board members Well, they can, they can apply to the old, I'm, no, but I'm saying they can apply under the, uh, uh, without that change. Yes, they can just go through the process without it. Uh, they can't in this neighborhood for the what they are trying to build. Okay. Others? Gene? Yeah, I mean, I think the first criterion to issue a special permit is that the use requested is listed as a special permit use in the use regulations for the district, and it does not meet that criteria because we don't have that district yet because it hasn't been approved by the Attorney General, so they're asking to construct something that's not a use allowed in the district. So I think what we would need to do 
is to have a determination the same way when we have a determination that we issue a special permit. Determination denies the special permit because the use requested is not listed as something requiring a special permit in the use regulations. So it could just be a very short um, determination that we would then all sign off and that would be done. And then when the AG approves the regulations, then they just file the right application and the regulations are in effect. Uh, the bylaw is in effect. I think what Ken was suggesting was that he was, Ken was suggesting that we would hear the refiled site plan review ahead of the AG's decision. And I was saying that I did not feel comfortable with that. I would prefer to wait until after the AG's yes, decision. So that's the question. Okay. Steve? I, I concur with the two of you. I would really prefer, before we have a hear, before we hold hearings, I would like the AG to have weighed in. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on this topic? No. Okay. Uh, so with that, is there a um, motion to dismiss docket number 3799 for 5 to 7 Belknap Street with a request that the applicant uh, withdraw and refile with the correct application format of the site plan review uh, after the Attorney General's decision has been uh, received by the town on the multifamily over housing overlay districts. Can I suggest an alternative? Um, the alternative is that we dismiss the application because it was not one that requires a special permit and the use is currently not allowed. They don't have to withdraw if we dismiss the application. So all we need to do is vote to dismiss the application because the use request is not listed as a special permit for yep. that use district. That's fine. We can do so without withdrawing. Right. Without asking them to withdraw. Right. Okay. Right. And then and then the department would just have to write a very small, a very short determination that basically just says that. And, and that allows them to be able to submit with the proper right. format, um, with proper the time. proper application rather at the proper time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. So is there uh, a motion to uh, dismiss this application? Um, at this time. So moved for its failure to have a, a use that's listed as a special permit in the district. I'll second. Great. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Shana? Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, um, the next item is agenda item number three, the Arlington Master Plan Update Advisory Committee. Uh, so we will, we discussed that there were two board members who were interested, potentially interested in uh, representing the, the board on the AMP Up Advisory Committee. Um, I believe that uh, both, of, both of those board members uh, at least intended to uh, attend the, the first meeting. Um, Claire, I don't know if you wanted to give us a quick update on the first meeting, and then we can have a discussion around um, appointing a board member to the committee. Sure. Um, we had the uh, master plan uh, update advisory committee. We had our first meeting last Thursday, um, and it went pretty well. We had, everyone was in attendance minus one who had let me know that uh, earlier that he was not going to be able to attend. Um, we went over. Uh, roles and responsibilities mostly of the board and I um, circulated a roles and responsibilities draft document. Um, it was, you know, part of a discussion and I'm hopeful I'll hear, uh, you know, back with some comments um, on the roles and responsibilities. People seemed pretty open um, to, uh, to that document and, um, you know, the outline of, uh, you know, how we're going to work together. Um, we also need to elect two co-chairs, um, and I asked uh, members of the committee to please submit, um, you know, their name and if they had any interest in being one of the co-chairs of the committee. Um, and then we, it's pretty much, that, that was pretty much um, what we did um, on Thursday night. It lasted about an hour, um, and Gina and Steve were both in attendance. Um, 
I think you know we we need to get the representative from the redevelopment board and one from the select board, and then the, the, then the committee will be um, complete. Um, the first task of the committee will be to review um, an RFP that staff and I have been working on for master plan update consultant, um, and that will be going out. Uh, that draft will be going out to the committee for their review, um, likely by the end of the week. Although it is a short week, so if, if not the end of this week, early next week. Great. Thank you. Um, Steve, any any thoughts on the on our appointment? On on whether you still have interest on your thoughts on having attended the first uh, the first meeting? Well, um, and I don't mean to speak for Mr. Benson. I think we're both interested, mm -hmm. but you know, I I defer to the board as to whether one or two applicants is access acceptable. Um, if there are two, I would like to, but if there are Board would prefer one. I would um, support Mr. Benson uh, acting as a representative. Great, thank you. Jean? Yes, I'd be happy to be a representative. I know I had um, some hesitation last time. I just had to think through my life. <laughs> Not that I thought through everything about my life, but just enough to realize that I could, you know, I had the time um, and inclination to do it. And I think. If um, Steve would want to do it too, I think it would be fine to have both of us on the committee. So, great, Shana. Um, I think I think there's an amazing brain trust here. <laughs> so, uh, so if there's inclination, time and inclination on both of their parts, that's wonderful. Great, Tim. Yeah. I think both of them are great candidates, and I would support either one of them. Claire, do you have, um, in terms of the makeup of the committee and how that was um, formed, or is there, I know in uh, other committees that have, that have been concerned with this level of planning for the town, we have had multiple redevelopment board yes. members. Is there a specific um, reasoning when this committee was originally um, conceived that a single redevelopment board meet member was selected or would the committee be open to having two redevelopment board members uh, present on the committee? I think I think we would be open to having two redevelopment board members on the committee. Again, this, this board, the redevelopment board, in its um, role as the planning board does oversee and govern the process. So if it's a wish of this board to include two members um, on the committee, then by all means, you know, we can, we can certainly do that. Um, I modeled the committee basically on the way that the master plan committee was put together in 2015, but that doesn't mean that we can't, you know, make some changes and um, have two members of the redevelopment board on. Great, thank you. I appreciate that clarification. I um, personally think that Jean and Steve bring very different perspectives in terms of their interest in where they are, um, you know, where you would probably plug in in terms of any subcommittees. I think, too, given the number of subcommittees that um, I think there were seven impact areas yes. that we were looking at doing, that in order to have a redevelopment representative um, spread through, throughout uh, throughout those those areas, that it uh, might behoove the board to have uh, more representation. So I think that the suggestion made by Steve and, and Jean to appoint two members, um, in, in my point of view, I think is a is a good recommendation. Agreed. Any other? Is it your motion? I'll second it. Yeah. Great. Uh, so is there a motion to um, approve uh, both Jean Benson and Steve Revelak as the Arlington Redevelopment Board representatives on the AMP Up Advisory Committee? So motion. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Kim. Yes. Shana? Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Congratulations, both of you, and thank you for all the time I know that you will both <laughs> put into this effort. You yes, have we, done it. We have indeed. All right. So that closes agenda item number three. Uh, we'll now, look at that right on time, move to uh, agenda item number four, which is the public hearing for docket 3801 for 61 Dudley Street. Um, and uh, I believe that we have our applicants with us this evening. So uh, what I'd like to do uh, first is uh, turn it over to the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development. I'm going to flip the first two bullet points here and ask Claire to 
provide a five minute overview, um, up to five minute overview, then we'll ask the applicant to um, please uh, make their presentation. Uh, the board members will uh, discuss and um, provide some uh, initial questions. We'll open it up for public comment, and then the board will um, uh, will we'll come back and, and uh, discuss a little bit more before deciding whether or not a decision will be made this evening. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Claire. Great, thank you. So we're looking tonight at 61 Dudley Street in Arlington, Mass., which is in the um, industrial district. Um, they would like to uh, renovate the existing single-family non-conforming residence uh, into a two-family duplex. This property abuts the Minuteman Bikeway, um, which is how it is uh, under the ARB's jurisdiction um, this evening and eligible potentially for a special permit and environmental design review. Um, approval of this project will require several findings, um, as well as relief from following requirements. Um, uh, where feasible, the principal facade and the principal building on the site should be no more than 10 feet from the lot line. Um, the applicant seeks relief to be further than 10 feet. Required minimum transparency of the ground floor principal facade visible from the public right away shall be 50% of the area. Um, applicant is uh, arguing that that is not uh, appropriate for a residential uh, development. Um, the primary building uh, entry shall be connected by an accessible surface to the public uh, sidewalk. Um, they're seeking relief uh, from that requirement as well as um, they will be providing a shade tree, uh, but not perhaps every 35 linear feet. Um, uh, two benches uh, related to uh, the property being on the Minimum Bikeway. The applicant does propose two benches, but not, um, you know, not accessible uh, on the on the property itself. Um, but they are proposing them a little bit further down. Um, also, this project uh, has done uh, a solar. Uh, rooftop solar analysis. They've determined that they can't um, uh, build a solar to the equivalent of at least 50% of the roof area in the building, uh, uh, roof, excuse me, roof area of the building. Um, the findings uh, that, are, that we're looking for here are related to section 8.1.1a, which would be a finding that the pre-existing non-conforming structure and use may be extended without being substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood finding that the non-conforming use of the structure as a detached single family may be changed to another non-conforming use, which is a duplex dwelling not substantially different from the existing use, would be residential to residential. This is an 8.1.2b. Finding that the alteration and extension of the single or two-family residential structure, which increases the non-conforming nature of the structure, will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, which is 8.1.3b. The finding that the addition of a driveway directly in front of the structure is necessary and convenient to the public interest, which is section 6.1.10F1. Um, so this is essentially a, a single family looking to move uh, into being a, du a duplex uh, property um, in the industrial district with um, you know, several, uh, uh, several concessions and findings um, being requested to the board. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so with that, I would uh, like to see if there is a member of the applicant team who would like to make a presentation this evening. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, Director Ricker. My name is Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor. Thank you so much. I just want to make sure, Sean, are you going to be able to pick up the applicants with Mike? Yeah, if they might be able to move to the front row, if possible. Uh, sorry, uh. And we can um, set this table up so that you can place your papers. Sorry about that. Thank you. That's okay. Oh, uh, with me tonight uh, are the uh, Gary and Mark Santini. I just have one, and uh, the architect Brian Poisson. I just have one housekeeping matter. Um, my clients tell me that it's Santini Real Real Estate, Santini Realty LLC, correct? Correct. Right. Not Santini, Santini Realty Trust. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, I think, and you heard Director Ricker, I think what is um, significant is the findings under Section 8. Uh, and I would suggest to you that 8.1.2b uh, is one of the more important ones here. Um, I've, you've got an impact, a very detailed impact statement that was prepared, that um, was provided in connection with this petition. You also have a memorandum of law. 
and I believe that you have the ability, you clearly have the ability under Section 8 to grant this relief. as a residential to residential use. I would suggest to you it's not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. It's a significant improvement um, to the lot. And this is a 6,200 square foot lot, so use in the industrial district is really, it's not big enough for any significant industrial use. Um, we would also suggest to you that um, housing in Arlington um, is a critical need. And this is near the public transportation. Um, and it's in keeping with the MBTA plan as well. Um, with respect to the Section 5, um, uh, requirements, those really um, address a commercial or industrial use. It's not really a residential type use. I, as a, uh, Director Ricker said, it's really more of if it was an industrial or commercial use. It's not applicable for a residential use. Uh, we think the board, I will not go through all the impact statement. I know the board um, has accepted it unless you want me to go through it and all the requirements. I don't think that's necessary. It's been detailed. Um, I think the time would be better spent um, to hear from the architect if that's what your inclination is. I mean, whatever you would like to share with us this evening, that sounds great. And yes, we, we have all read the application, so um, unless there's anything you'd like to highlight, we... Uh, I think 8.1.2b uh, um, is great. Uh, the most applicable provision here. Great, thank for, you. For the relief requested. Uh, so my name is Brian Poisson. I'm with the Project Architects. Um, so we were designers on the project. Um, you can see on the screen, and I don't know if you guys have it on your laptops. Uh, that is the proposed site plan. You can see the existing structure on the very sort of right front corner. Uh, the proposal, we're, we're going to be expanding that existing building um, and then converting it from a single family to a, a duplex. Um, so you can see the area mark the proposed addition. We are keeping our front setback and side setback with the currently are, and then we are proposing uh, to reuse the driveway on the right-hand side, and then the left side of the duplex will have the, the new driveway. Uh, if we can change the screen. Uh, so that gives you a sense of the street context. I'm sure you guys are all pretty familiar with Dudley, uh, Dudley Street. Uh, so 61, as you can see, is the little cape in the upper sort of left-hand photo. Um, so that gives you a sense of sort of the adjacent houses to the right and to the left. Um, go to the next screen, right? Uh, uh, just, uh, just the next sheet, the second sheet. Uh, it's a little gray, but uh, in the upper right hand corner, you can get a sense of the, the site plan for the existing conditions on the left hand side and then I proposed on the right-hand side. My next drawing. Um, that's our existing, or proposed foundation plan. So we'll have a garage under, um, which will allow us for bike storage. Sorry, the drawing's really light on the screen. Uh, and the next sheet shows the first floor plan. Uh, so it's a common area of access from the front street of the the stairs coming up, and then the building is divided symmetrically in half, and then there are mirror designs on both sides. So that's the main living space with a deck off to the rear down to the rear yard. Next, uh, that is the second floor plan um, that houses the, um, all the bedroom areas, the bathroom, and uh, some closet space. And then up in the attic is a dormer attic, which we have just some open storage for home office. Um, the next sheets are going to show you the this roof plan. So that shows the sense. Um, we have another drawing that shows where the solar arrays could potentially go down the road. Um, those are the existing exterior elevations. So it's a very modest home. And then that's our proposed. Um, sort of definitely in keeping with the, the neighborhood from a massive standpoint, from a stylistic standpoint. That's the right side elevation, rear elevation, and then the last sheet, which is the left side elevation. Um, and then it does, that's a rendering showing some of the, the finishes and the landscape. Great. Anything else? Oh, 
have some examples if you want to see side examples. But Great, thank you. Of course. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for uh, bringing the application in front of us. Um, what I'd like to do now is uh, turn it over to the members of the board for uh, any any questions um, or uh, initial thoughts that you'd like to share with other members of the board. And we'll start down in the end with Steve. Yeah, I, I do have a couple of questions. Uh, first, which, because this is a pre-existing non-conforming structure, um, you aren't going to you're not going to eliminate the use, so I assume that you're, you're saving two walls? Correct. Would it be the south wall and the east wall? Yes, the right front one. Right front one, okay. Yep. And uh, I noticed that you uh, you elected to put two driveways in, uh, where sort of the standard duplex configuration is a double wide driveway up front, double wide driveway in the center uh, to meet our requirements for a single curb cut. And I was just wondering about your thought process for uh, asking for requesting the second one. Uh, we had the existing one on the right-hand side, which wouldn't have been conducive to the to the design sort of the layout on the site plan. Okay. So by keeping that one, sort of forcing us to add this, and, and it saves you from having to do a lot of excavation. Correct. Okay. Um, there is. I noticed there is a, a, a sort of a big tree in the back. Uh, my understanding is that you plan to preserve that. Correct. Yep. And I guess you'll have to trim it a little bit to get clearance. If that, but yeah. Yep. Okay, uh, one question for staff or anyone who's an attorney. Um, given that this is a pre-existing non-conforming single family structure that's on a lot with 50 feet of frontage and 5,000 square feet of area, if you were to just rebuild the single family home, retaining the two walls that, um, your, your, um, I'm sorry, Brian, Brian, Brian mentioned, could you do that by right? Um, I, I, I don't think so. I think we'd still have to come in. Come in? Okay. Oh, yeah. I think we would under um, Section 8. Okay. All right. Uh, no further questions. Great. Thank you. Gene. I, yes. Yeah, thank you. I, I thought it was a very complete package you gave to us. I, I did appreciate having the opportunity to look through it that way. Um, the current tenancy, is there a tenant now in the building? Is there a tenant? They are moving out now. Is that because you intend to um, change so, the building? Yeah, they found a house, so they were leaving, and we were planning this proposal, so the timing just fell right at this time. And the, the Santinis have owned this property for over 50 years, um, this particular property. Um, and I don't, I'm mm. sure many of you are familiar with the fact they've been in business in town for over 100 years. Um, Property card said it was purchased in 2017. Is that incorrect? That's incorrect. Okay. Um, what was the rental price for the tenants who are meeting? 2800 2800 And when, when this is rebuilt as a two family, do you intend to? Sell them yes. as condos? Yes, we do. About the solar array, mm -hmm. I thought I saw something in the plans that said um, you could fill 48% of yes. it with Correct. the solar array. But then when you gave your presentation, you didn't say that you would do that. You said it would be solar ready. So did I misunderstand? Uh, yes. I guess so. So this would include putting solar on 48% of it? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I have no other questions. Great. Sheena. Um, since you just mentioned solar, I would actually encourage you to talk with the solar provider before moving forward. Um, uh, it can be difficult to, to get uh, solar on a small condo. Um, there can be 
uh, providers can have concerns about shared roofs, about more than one system on shared roofs. So before, before you commit to something for a permit, I would make sure that uh, I'd make sure it's actually feasible. Solar ready may be uh, a safer bet here. Um, I wanted to ask about the trees. Um, uh, there are, I think you said there's one planned for the center um, in between the two driveways, but not a second tree. Why, uh, why not the second tree? Um, the distance required, we really needed one, uh, but. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, and the front yards will all be landscape. Okay, great. And the trees in the back are not, uh, are, are not to be. They're, they're safe. That's right. Yep. Um, the bench location is that public? Is is that a public space that you've identified? Yes. Um, for the yes. Bench, it's great. Yep. Okay. Um, so. So, I was looking at the front facade, and I understand the. Um, I understand the comment about transparent, transparency. I was wondering if, um, if you had thought about methods to add additional depth or appearance of depth that might, um, that might uh, assist with breaking things up. Um, it wouldn't. It would not mitigate the transparency issue but it might but it might move in the right direction that was one thing I was thinking about um, and go ahead I mean specifically you know certainly we could do a box window and that sort of front elevation and a little group piece yeah. um, so there's different ways we could yeah. articulate that if okay. that was a condition yeah. And have you have you thought about uh, trash location? Uh, Where are you going to put the trash cans? In the garage. Okay. Um, I think that's it for now. Thank you, Shana. Ken? Uh, well, let me start off with a broad picture first. When I first came here, well, for when I got this, I was looking at this saying, you know, we're reducing our industrial uh, area. But then I um, took the time this afternoon to drive by your neighborhood. And it is not an industrial neighborhood. It's, uh, it's, it's residential. And uh, so I think by my tour and then thinking about some more, I'm off the fence. And I think I'm OK with your exception here. Uh, it does fit the neighborhood well. So that's my first part, saying that I agree uh, of keeping it as a, as a residential non-performing is fine for me. me. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, but I do want to talk a little bit about your architecture. Uh, a little bit about the proportions. Uh, if I look at uh, the corners of the building, that's sort of integrated with the windows. Um, that seems kind of shallow. It looks, if you make that look taller, if you can, I'm not sure. You probably have to bring in the, the overhang a little bit so, uh, so, it would, so you can bring up the corners a little bit higher so you can get, the, uh, get a, that, uh, that freeze board across there a little taller. Above the windows. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So, because right now it looks, looks kind of like an afterthought that's sort of stuck in there. And I know you don't want to lower the windows and you don't want to lower the doors. You want that lined up on the inside. So I, I know where you're going from there. So, so if you take another look at that, just to make that a little more substantial. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then two year elevations uh, on the corner show these, um, I don't know, it's been a while since I've been to school. Uh, the little dentures, the little small little things underneath the corners. Dental moldings. Hmm? The dental moldings? Yes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, 
it's on the side elevation. You show it in the side elevations, but you don't show it in the front elevation. Yep. Um, what's your intention? You don't like it. Hmm? Is it you don't like it? Well, I don't know what you want. I mean, you, uh, on the front elevation, you, you don't show it. I mean, it's not what I want. It's what. Yeah. I know. It was just a detail we were showing on. Uh, but just on the sides, not on the correct. front. Yeah. So, are you gonna have it or not have it? We were planning, proposing to have it. Okay, so all we need to do is show, so, so all you have to do is add a couple of lines in the front elevation and you, you'll have that there. Okay. I'm okay with either way, I just wanted to make sure mm -hmm. what your intent was. Uh, your water table, I'm moving on, okay, I'm done with that. Uh, okay. Your water table seems kind of um, uh, thin too, if you could sort of beef that up a little more. Uh, Right now you just have a band and maybe you put a little slant on it a little bit, you know, a little more traditional, or make the make the water table a little thicker. And that, uh, you know, they'll give it a little better uh, proportion. Otherwise, it's a very handsome building. I like it. Great. Uh, Thank well, you. Go ahead. Uh, your mechanic equipment you're going to plan on, are you guys using heat pumps or? Um, yeah, so uh, it's uh, electric now, not anything. So we're going with heat pumps. So you can locate the, uh, the condensers outside between the two stairs in the back. Uh, it would seem like a good place. I, I, yeah. That I would recommend, yeah. not on the side or on the front or anything else. That's probably where they'll go. We haven't thought that far ahead yet, but that's... I just don't, you know, just yeah. a, a great place to put it. Yeah, they've gone the rear. Between the two stairs, right? Yep. Yeah. There should be enough space there for... Yeah, we're on that very outside. Where are you at? Where are you outside? So, Yeah, so they're on the A11. We have two options, right? They could go here, here, or between the stairs. Ideally, between the stairs is the, the best spot. But it doesn't preclude us from doing that. Okay. We're. I think I guess it's. I think putting it between the stairs would be best for your neighbors. You know. And also, there's no windows there, so you're not really going to hear the fan whizzing. Yeah. Uh, this will be my last question. Okay. Uh, on the dormers, is it just some sort of graphics, or is that how you, you, you plan to uh, terminate the siding? Uh, where it meets the roof at the triangle. If you look at the A2.1, see the dormer there? Mm -hmm. uh, the siding sort of stops and there's, there's a little triangular piece there. Yes, I see that. No, the siding would go all the way. So that triangle piece is just not, this is a graphic garbage. It's just gonna, it's gonna run horizontally. Yeah, so that right. top flat board would run. Okay. It just looks like a big, Okay. I don't know. Beers out there, something. I don't know. Okay, that's all I had. Great, thank you, Ken. Uh, any other questions before we move to public comment before our discussion? I have yes. More question. I believe there's a tree, a street tree, at sort of the left corner of the property, and I wonder if that was going to have to come down to put in the second driveway. What's on the left? One on the left, so. I don't think so, but I, I can't answer that, you know, at this point. Is, we, it, a we is it a town tree or is I it's think a it's, town it's, tree. it's a town tree? Yeah, it's on the side of Yeah. Um, yeah. That, and I couldn't figure it out when I went over and looked at the property yeah. today we, either. We haven't figured out the layout, you know, completely at this time, and we weren't really thinking about the tree now that you brought it up. Yeah, we have to consider. Yes, it would be a concern, I think. Yeah. It's a pretty, I forgot what type of tree it is, but it looks like a mature and pretty good height yeah. tree. Anything else? Okay. Um, so at this time, what we'd like to do is uh, open the hearing up for a public comment. Anyone joining us this evening who would like to speak, please uh, indicate so by raising your hand, please. If I could ask you please sit in the front here so the microphone can yeah. pick you up. 
Um, please introduce yourself by your first, last name, and address, and you will have up to three minutes to speak. Okay, Winnell Evans, um, Orchard Place. I'm like Ken, I was really on the fence about this project. I live about a block away, I walk up and down Dudley Street regularly. I love the mix of residential, light industrial. It's a very, very funky street. Um, so I am mainly in favor of this project um, to, to add, to, to retain the, the um, residential use, even though it does go against the town's stated desire to increase business development. But I, but I, I think it's appropriate here. Um, I really appreciate a lot of what you guys are doing. I appreciate that you're maintaining the front setback. I appreciate the commitment to saving the trees very, very much. I appreciate that you're not creating two blank sides, but that you're going to have windows all the way around. There's, there's a lot that I like about this plan and, and appreciate. And I have just a few questions. Um, I noticed that the usable open space uh, um, is going to be reduced from 4,400 roughly square feet to zero square feet. So I'm curious about what in practice that will allow. That's question number one. Question number two is, the height is indicated at three stories, 37.8 feet, which exceeds what would be allowed in a residential district, but comes in under what would be allowed in an industrial district. And since um, the application is attempting to, uh, I don't use this term pejoratively, but since it's attempting to invade some of the, the industrial regulations, it, it seems like it's kind of in a no man's land. So is it residential, is it industrial? And my third question is, I understand that because of the, um, uh, because this lot touches the bike path, it comes before the ARB, but should it not have gone before the CBA first to get a variance for these changes and then come here? And that's it. Those are my three questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else uh, this evening, uh, member of the public who is wishing to speak on this talk, on this uh, hearing? Okay. So with that, we will um, close public comment and turn it back to the board. Um, I do uh, appreciate the, the three questions. I will say that um, for the last question, um, you know, we'll certainly go back and look at uh, usable open space and, and three stories, and I'll ask the applicant um, to address those unless a member of the board uh, wishes to. Um, the redevelopment board in its um, in its role as a um, as a both a planning board as well as a redevelopment authority in the town does have the authority to grant relief on certain sections of the um, of the zoning bylaw, several of which we've outlined this evening. Um, so that is a decision that we can certainly discuss in terms of the extension of the the non-conforming use, and that is a discussion we'll be having um, at the at the board this evening. Um, Steve. Uh, did you want to weigh in on either of the first two questions, um, or do you want to uh, defer the applicant? Well, I have... Or do you share those questions? Well, I, I sort of share them. Um, so I, I, I do have some general thoughts. It, Please, I'd like let's start to, there. Um, I, I'd like to throw them out and see what you think. Yes. So one of... I realize that this is a pre-existing non-conforming use. Um, it is also a single or two family home, which under chapter 40A gets, you know, afforded extra protection. And I, I realize that you're also converting from, you know, one non-conforming use to another. Personally, I'm very comfortable finding, uh, making the four findings uh, outlined in the staff memo, the three under section 83 and the 146110. Where I'm less clear, and this is, I, I think, a, a flaw in the bylaw, is on the dimensional aspects. So our, my, my, this is my personal opinion, our industrial district standards do not contemplate the reconstruction of a single or two family dwelling. Um, they have one set of heights, so um, you know, you, you could be, as far as I'm concerned, you could ask to go up to 65 feet if you met all of the other standards, um, but that's not what you're doing. Um, I would like to treat this as just, you're building a duplex, and have it subject to the regular dimensional regulations 
um, that a duplex would be subject to. So for example, in the R2 district, where there would be an open space requirement and a 35 foot height requirement in exchange for um, sort of granting relief on the on the industrial standards for like 50% fenestration and, and that sort of thing. But I, that, that's just where I'm thinking. Um, but you know, my mind isn't solidly made up and I'd like to hear what my colleagues say. Think about that. Can I, can I address that? Uh, as a matter of from a legal perspective. Uh, sure, I know you've written a memo, so if it's something no, but different than what yes, you've had in the memo. Different. Yes. Um, I understand the thought process, but that's a slippery slope. Okay. You have to use the dimensional requirements for this district. I know you want to trade off, but uh -huh. the, what, what applies are these dimensional requirements. Okay. Because if you have other people coming in with other uses, uh, they may say, well, we want to use the dimensional requirements for this particular use. Uh, this is the dimensional requirements you have to use because it's in this district. Oh, but I, I get it, Steve. I get yeah. what you're, you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, and Steve, I, <laughs> I am, I am too struggling with the gymnastics that we are um, being asked to do in order to get to an approval on this one. With regard to, it seems like we're looking at um, certain items in terms of treating this as um, the. Uh, we're looking at this as a, as a two-family, which is not allowable, um, and it is a different different use, um, and at the same time being asked to waive significant requirements, which were put in place to contemplate that when properties turned over and were redeveloped, that they were done so with a very specific um, reason, which is to meet the, the character of the industrial district as we discussed quite at length at, at town meeting. Um, so I am, uh, I'm similarly struggling <laughs> with, uh, with that aspect of, uh, of the project that's in front of us. Gina, your thoughts? Um, and Jean, or Jean? Jean, uh, okay, you want to go first? No, go for first? it and I'll, okay. um, yeah, I have a few thoughts. This isn't a variance, so we're not dealing with the whole rules about variances at all. These are all things that theoretically are allowed under the existing zoning. Um, so I think there are, there are two, I, I'm approaching this in a couple of ways, and I think it's the same thing that you, Steve, and you, uh, Rachel, mentioned, is that if you look at all of the rules for the industrial zone, none of them contemplate single or two-family houses there. They're all set up for commercial buildings. That's why you have everything from the transparency to the depth from the street to the accessibility, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so so that's, that's one piece. And that piece is, do we grant all of those changes that um, would be required because this is not uh, uh, commercial? And I started writing them down and I ran out of room. There's, there's the driveway, the, the parking is not supposed to be in the building, according to the rules. The driveway, parking, the bench is supposed to be on the property or some other amenity on the property where people can get to from the back path. Pretty unlikely to be a horrible from the fence in the back, right? Um, there, there are other things I can't read my handwriting anymore, but there are a few. There are a few more of them also. And, and that gets to um, the other issue, which is, is this not more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing use. That's the two things. Now I'm going to say something that I said a few months ago when we were considering the property on um, Belknap Street that just happened to but the bikeway. My feeling of, about our role is it just happens to be that this property abuts the bikeway. If it were on the other side of the street, it would go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, not to us, and they would make the decision without all of the flexibility 
that we have. And I don't think all of that flexibility was intended to be for this type of thing that just happens to abut Minuteman Bikeway. So if that's the case and you look at all of these um, exceptions we would have to make, there's nothing in the bylaw that authorizes making those exceptions except for our general overall ability to do that. So consistent with where I was on Belknap Street and where I think the line should be drawn, I cannot agree to all of these exceptions that we would have to do. Also, it's, it's an interesting street, as, a, as everybody talked about, because it really is a mix of residential, older residential, and commercial. And then there's the R5 property at the Grove Street end, which is the, um, the apartment building there. But the intention in the bylaw for a long time has been for eventually this to be industrial and not to allow more um, residential. And in fact, when we presented the new industrial zoning to town meeting about three years ago, there was a lot of discussion about whether to allow um, residential, new residential, and the final decision was only mixed use for artists' residences. So that was the last word we got from town meeting. So aside from can we approve all of these changes, and the rest of you may approve all of the changes because you may not agree with my take on what happens when this just happens to be on the bikeway or next to the bikeway, I think this is more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing use because once it gets built as a two-family and the sole is condos, it's not going to change anytime soon. You know, and there's it will lose the opportunity that in some period of time, this 1940s small house will get converted. You know, there's at least one or two small houses like this on the block that are now offices. Like, you get electric, has their offices in one of those small buildings. So I think we, if we do this, we're losing what I think the intention of town meeting and the bylaw is and so I think it is more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing use, because the neighborhood should be transitioning to industrial slowly and not to residential. So those are my current thoughts about it. Great, thank you, Jean. Shana? Should have gone first. Wow, <laughs> you gave, you've given a lot to think about. Uh, that's really interesting. Um, I, had planned to say that I was struggling with exactly the same things as Steve and Rachel and that I was inclined to think that this was a, a um, good project um, and, and uh, that a, a good and well-conceived project um, uh, and that probably I could get there with a little more conversation, but but um, I had not I had not understood the context about uh, the about the intent for the transition to industrial. That um, that's very interesting context and and may change my position. And perhaps suggest to me that the zoning board of appeals is a better uh, venue for, and and perhaps suggest to me uh, your your comments about the zoning board of appeals uh, are also interesting ones in my mind, and perhaps the zoning board of appeals uh, should be should be hearing this instead. Um, so, so um, again, I I think. For multiple reasons, both the fact that this is in the industrial zone and um, to Jean's point about the bike path, um, I think this is the the right board. However, I completely agree with everything that Jean said. And my biggest concern in terms of the whether this is more detrimental to the neighborhood or not is that again, 
once this um, is sold as condos and changes hand, it is unlikely to do so in the future and you lose the opportunity for any type of more creative development in that block. Ken? Um, I'm going to sort of disagree with you guys. And I, I, I believe that uh, this, this lot is a tiny lot. It's only 6,000 square feet. Uh, and, there, and there's a bunch of lots there that size and a bunch of larger lots. And this right here is unfortunate, but right on the fringe of, of, uh, uh, of the zoning. So it happens. You know, if, if the line was drawn one way or the other, we wouldn't be having this talk right now. But since we are, I think, we should, I mean, I'm the last to give up industrial space or business space. I've always fought for that. But I just don't think this is a, that this, this small space is, is a detriment to the neighborhood because uh, the other two spaces next to it are also 6,000 6, square foot, I think, uh, houses. It's not gonna. It's, it's not gonna change um, by some, someone's gonna come in there and magically say, "Okay, I'll buy up all three of these properties and I'll put industry there." They're just gonna find someplace else easier to do that, uh, and where there's ample parking and you know better transportation. Yes, it is on the bike path, so I guess the workers could ride the bicycles to work. But uh, it's not really suited. Uh, I would fight to encourage industrial and business in areas that are suited for it. I just not see that that way here. And that's the way I see it, you know. And uh, I wouldn't have to disagree with you, 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 which is my opinion. Uh, other thoughts, Steve? Well, yeah, I, I mean, to me, I, I do think this, we have to treat, I would, I think it would make sense to, if we're going to, my thoughts, my before before uh, this, this meeting started, my thoughts were that we should either treat this as a duplex and follow those dimensional standards or treat it as something in the industrial district, follow those dimensional standards and the you know, dimensional standards and development standards. So just looking at the staff memo um, and the, uh, the, the, there are five points of relief that are being requested. Uh, so one, you know, things that I would like to see to feel comfortable, you know, taking the I district dimensional standards. I would like to see, um, you know, I understand that the principal building you know, okay, so the principal building shall be no more than 10 feet from the front lot line. I understand that in order to preserve, you know, to reconstruct the building, you have to preserve a wall. So that front lot line is kind of where, where the front line, or the front, uh, the building front is kind of where it is. Um, for the transparency, 50% transparency, I don't, um, I agree it's, it's, it is a strange requirement for a duplex, but I, I think it is a requirement of the district. For the uh, for the accessible surface, um, as the memo pointed out, that is you know, the accessible entrance is required for a single family dwelling. So I I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, providing a shade tree every linear 35 feet, I think the applicants have agreed to do that. Uh, for two benches, um, I, it sounds like the intent is to provide two benches, but not in the yard, but behind sort of the fence. Is that is that correct? No, as long as there's a common area that you're facing the building to the left, you'll rattle. Okay, but you're you're going to provide two benches. Correct. Out there. Okay. There's but a chain link fence that comes across, right? You cannot access the benches from our property. Okay. If we put them on our property, so. But that's public space that you would need to work together with the select board. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and finally, the um, the requirement for 50% of the roof for solar. Um, I under, it sounds like you can do 48, yeah. um, and I, you know, and I understand there's a big tree overhead, um, and I would suggest keeping the tree, <laughs> and I, I would be okay with 48 percent. So in short, um, I, I think for me to 
feel behind to get behind this. I'd I'd like to see the the fenestration standard met. Gene, just a few other thoughts. On, on the one hand, I think the attorney in standard is correct that if you look at the dimensional requirements in the district, they're different than in the R2 district, for example. However, when we're making the decision on whether this is more detrimental to the neighborhood, you could decide it's more detrimental if it doesn't meet the R2 standards. Because if you look at all those other houses nearby, they're a lot smaller and shorter. So if you wanted to go that direction, I would suggest you could go that direction. The, the bylaw does give us the ability to say, oh, you can't do 50% solar, you can do 48% solar. So that's one thing we clearly have the authority to do under the bylaw. Not us, but you know, in general, the bylaw allows that. Um, I guess I, I still come down thinking that there are things like the driveways where I don't think we have the authority to allow those changes. And every time we allow the two family condo on the street, it's less likely to me conversion to industrial at some time. And it's not at the edge of the industrial district. The industrial district except for the R5 on the Grove Street end, the entire thing is industrial. And even though the houses on, on this side of the street or the buildings for a few are still residences, as I mentioned, they're not all residents anymore. On the other side, they're mostly industrial. There are some sort of small homes there too, so it's clearly a mix. But like the Santini office building is right across the street from it. So, I'm still thinking that um, we can't grant the relief that they need to build this um, and that it would be more detrimental to the neighborhood to allow it. And that's where I am. But I think there are ways for you to say yes if you want to say yes. Gina, any other thoughts? Not at the moment. Um, okay. Um, it sounds like we have um, a split <laughs> board here. Um, we, um, I, I, I feel feel strongly. Um, Again, um, in I think the way that Jean had articulated this, I, I do have concerns around um, a, approving this and shutting the door on an, uh, what I think would be a more um, appropriate um, for the district um, redevelopment. Um, Jean, you are you are leaning in that direction two? Yes, I would vote no. Okay. And um, I know Ken is in favor of the project. Steve, you are, you have some changes mm -hmm. that you would like to see if you are in favor. Yes. If, if the project was to move forward. So Shane, <laughs> where, where are you coming here? Because we, we are going to need to craft a motion yeah. um, or give some specific guidance to the applicant for what we would like them to explore before coming back to get some of the items um, to push it one way or the other would um, yeah would be I, necessary I think I'm leaning against um, because uh, because of the of the issues around potentially losing of losing potential industrial space. Okay. Um, with that being said, let me just get back to my. Uh, Ken, Steve, any other 
thoughts before I, I, I think at this point we would most likely craft a, a motion um, to um, to not approve the can I, can I just say one the hearing uh, let me ask okay. the, the board you, members first before, before we, we before we take a motion yeah. I'll, I'll turn it back to you I'm just going to turn it back to the yeah. other board members any any other thoughts well if uh, four vo four votes are required and uh, two are and two are and we don't have four then um, the outcome of that is pretty clear okay <laughs> why do we need four? are four votes required this is a to approve vote. I thought we don't need three this is not a multifamily, so it doesn't. It's not multifamily. Okay. It doesn't. It needs three or four. Yeah, three or more. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, my client would like to point out they did look at trying to put an industrial building on the site, but it's impossible because of the size. And if you went and you looked at the site, the Santinis are directly across the street, and on either side are houses. To the right, two to the left across the street and they're surrounded by houses so the reality is I understand that you want to try to uh, maintain potential industrial land but that's not the reality of it um, you've got houses on all, all around this thing um, and you have a lot that cannot service an industrial building so um, that's the predicament the other thing I would say is, is I don't think that um, I think that the substantial detriment is not that you're um, having a resident you're putting a residential use on that property there is a residential use on that property the substantial detriment is whether the alteration or modification constitutes more of a substantial detriment to the neighborhood so i think from a legal perspective i, I don't think that's a correct um, recitation with all my due respect to Jim. so i mean they they have a, um, have looked at this Oh, and unless somebody comes in and bulldozes all those houses, and the reality is that's not happening, um, you're not going to have an industrial use there. So isn't it better to maximize um, what's there? Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other thoughts before we move to a motion? The only other thought I'll say is, in addition to my feeling that it would be more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing use, I could not approve all of the seven or eight more than are simply listed in the staff memo that are required to allow this to go forward because, as I said before, I don't think we should be doing that just because something abuts the bike path. We should look at whether um, those are the powers that the ARB was given for this sort of property for this reason, and I think it wasn't. So I would vote no for both of those reasons. Understood. Uh, so, is there a motion uh, to uh, not approve the application uh, for docket number 3801? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. So, the motion is to not to approve. To not approve. So, saying yes votes no. Correct. Saying correct. Saying yes says no to. So to in the that application. Case you're going to vote yes. Okay. So I'm sorry. The motion is to not approve. So saying yes means that you are not I'm approving. Or yes. Yes. Correct. Right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes. All right. I'm voting yes. Shana. Yes. Uh, Ken. No. And I'm a yes. Uh, thank you for for bringing this in, but unfortunately, we're not able to approve it this evening. Uh, with that, that closes uh, docket number 3801, and we will now move to agenda item number five, which is open forum. So anyone who joined us this evening uh, who would uh, like an opportunity to address the board, uh, please raise your hand. Seeing no one, we will uh, close agenda item number five and move to agenda item number six, which is new business. And I will turn it over to Claire to see if there are any uh, new business items. New business at this time. Okay. Uh, any others from members of the board? Oh, new business? New business. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what so, a surprise. <laughs> yeah, so earlier this month, I went on a trip to Portland. And uh, Portland, Maine. Stayed in the downtown. Um, and I felt like a kid in a candy store. This is, downtown Portland is very BC architecture. 
architecture. By BC, I mean before cars. <laughs> so you have, you know, building main street buildings that just go they're right up to the sidewalk. They run them the other and the other and the other, and it's not broken up by a lot of dead space um, for parking lots. And I thought this was great. And be, and when I had a little bit of downtime, I downloaded their zoning bylaw and said, I'm going to look at their parking regulations. And some of the regs are good and some are bad. Or, well, I, I think some are, I, are ones that I would not favor. But one of the things that they did that I thought was interesting was they allow parking reductions through a fee in lieu. So, for example, if you would like to produce, you know, cut one parking space from your requirements, you would pay a fee of a few thousand dollars. It was basically five thousand dollars as of September, as of September 2010, then adjusted for inflation. But the money goes into something called a sustainable transportation fund, where it can be used for things like bus improvements, pedestrian amenities, bicycle parking. Uh, essentially anything that's not a single occupancy vehicle or private parking. Now, I thought, yeah, this, this seems like a cool... I, the reason I'm bringing this up is last fall we, you know, were talking about TDM plans for residential and said, well, we need to beef that up. So I'm kicking this out as something we might want to consider, <laughs> um, you know, when we finally get to that. Thank you, Steve. And I think that that reminds me as well, Claire. Do we have any update on the joint ARB meeting with the select board on the top of the parking? Only that the, um, the select board, uh, I believe the select board has voted or had a discussion about meeting with the ARB in the in September. September. And this can be absolutely a, a, an item on that agenda. Okay, great. Can we make a comment to Steve? Uh, please. Steve. Um, I agree with you, but Portland right now is a hot, hot space where a lot of people are they're trying to develop there, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to get a restaurant there, you have to get, if you want to eat at a restaurant, you have to get there early, otherwise you're not getting in, mm -hmm. okay? So they can afford to do that, all right? I think by putting a siphon on parking, like, like you said there, okay, is a great one, the community's hot. But when, it, when you want to encourage development, which we're trying to do right now because you don't have enough of it, and we have a lot of stuff that falters and holds it back, adding one more thing to it, I don't think it's going to help. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea if it's applied correctly, but not uh, where it becomes a, another added burden. Uh, that's how I see it. Okay? I'm not trying to say, okay. you know, I just saw that, you know, I've been there too. I, uh, you know, on the way up to uh, Bangor, you know, and uh, I said, "Wow, this place is great." Couldn't eat there. There's no restaurant. Or I couldn't get in. So I think we'll we'll put that on our our um, parking um, list of list of topics all related to parking for the future. Great. Um, any other new business items? So the only other item um, that I'll follow up on is that we um, should, at our um, next meeting, um, if not shortly thereafter, either review a memo um, in response to our meeting with Jim Doherty last week regarding what the redevelopment board um, would, uh, the, the, the boundaries for what would constitute a um, an acceptable modification to the existing special permit and what would push it into new special permit territory. Did we, so, did we talk to town council? That, that's what I'm suggesting oh, okay. that okay. Um, with the members of the department here that, that we need to um, move forward so that whether it's at our first meeting in July or our second meeting in July, I would like that to be a agenda item for the redevelopment board because we did commit to by the end of July we would have that in his hands. All right. I will um, continue to work with town council on providing that. Great. All right. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, so we'll move to agenda item number seven, which is to see if there is a motion to adjourn. So motion. Sorry. I'll take one of those as a second. Okay. All right. I'll, second. I'll move. I'll second. <laughs> move second. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Shana? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI 
to learn how you can help.